Thank you for joining the Chai Academy. My name is Rabbi Sachs, and welcome to the Chai Center. We, we have been discussing Jewish ethics and beliefs. Um, the, the previous class was on domestic harmony, Shalom Bias, and um, you can view any of our previous classes, there's hundreds of them at thechaisenter.com forward slash academy or Spotify and put in Chai Academy. Today's class we're going to focus in on, on the concept of righteous, righteous Gentiles. So um, it, it's interesting. Unlike Christianity, for example, um, you don't have to have a certain um, belief to, to, to go to heaven. In other words, Christianity is if you, um, if you don't believe in, in, in JC, Jesus, etc., then, then you, know, you, you go to hell. You won't get salvation. In Judaism, you don't have to believe in the, the Torah in order to attain salvation. You do not. So, and, it, and it's very novel because, you know, if you think about the witnesses and you think about others, it's always, if it's our way or the highway, and you will not get salvation, you will not be redeemed, you will not go to heaven, and, and Judaism doesn't take that approach. And I think Judaism's approach is to be a Jew, is a Jew, to be a Gentile, is a Gentile, and, um, you know, it's equal, equal doesn't mean same, and um, they're, 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 different strokes for different folks, but you don't have to buy hook, line, and sinker if you're not Jewish. And um, it's, it's, you know, it's, 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 it's an important point here. The, so the, the question is, and, and the Talmud discusses it, the Talmud says, you know, that, you know, there's heaven for everybody. There's, there's heaven for Jews, heaven for non-Jews, heaven you know, there's everybody. Everybody gets, uh, you know, can get into heaven. Everybody can, um, and and it, it's not that it's not a heaven is not just exclusive for Jewish people. Heaven is not just exclusive for Christians. Heaven is not just is exclusive for witnesses or or uh, Muslims or Taoists or Buddhists. Heaven is heaven, and um, everybody's allowed in heaven, everybody should anticipate going to heaven, etc, etc. Now it's interesting because um, Maimonides talks about that what, what is called a righteous Gentile. So Maimonides basically says a righteous Gentile is a Gentile keeps the moral code, which he calls the Noahide code, the laws that were given to Noah, that were originally given to Adam, and then um, re-given to Noah, and this is a universal code. Now, before the Torah was given, the the Jewish people, the Hebrews, the Israelites, had the the same universal code. Everybody had it from Adam and on. You had. Um, code. You had a universal code. The Torah was given, so we have some unique stuff. Passover, we eat matzah, right? And, and Yom Kippur, we fast. But we, everybody has to keep, everybody bar none, has to keep the, the universal code. So Maimonides says there are seven Noahide laws, universal laws, that branch out into, hello Don, that branch out into into um, 64, and then you know, they can further ex extrapolate, as we'll explain. And he says, and these, you have to keep these seven Noahide laws, and you have to realize that they came from God. That's part, part of the package. So what are the seven Noahide laws? Categories, I should say. So Maimonides codifies them, and he says the first one is... One, one, one must not universal code. We must not worship idols. Idols. So take a stone and worship it. Take a sun 
the moon, the stars, and worship it. Take a a, a you know a, a, a wooden face and worship it. That is idol worship, and and that's out. Right? You gotta you gotta you gotta realize that you know idols is just just that it's idols. It's not um, it's not God. It's not uh, it's you know and and an idol doesn't have much say in your life. Which by the way, worshiping 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 idols is essentially um, where where you 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 make it the idol. You say, this will help me, that will help me. It's very interesting. In the first, the first temple, the first holy temple was destroyed. And after it was, it was destroyed, it says in the Talmud, the rabbis, who they, they were there, they, these are the rabbis of the destruction, right? Some of them. And they, they said the temple was destroyed because of idol worship. They were, they, they were worshiping this, that, and the other. So after the temple was destroyed, the rabbis said, it, it, it's too tempting. Idol worship is too tempting. Please, dear God, take it away from us. So for the most part, do you know anybody who worships stones? Do you know anybody who worships the sun? I mean, we're talking about the sun to get a suntan, and they love the beach, but worship as a god. And um, we don't. There are two contemporary idols, however, and one of them is actually clearly written. It says, in God we trust on the dollar bill. People worship money. And the other form of idol worship today, contemporary idol worship, would be worship of self. You know, a real egomaniacal narcissist. That is a worshiping of self. Um, that would be idol worship. But, but we don't really see idol worship. Um, we don't see it. I mean, yeah, I guess in some places in the world there is, but it's not. It's not true to form idol worship. But you're not allowed to. That's a universal code. The second of the seven Noahide laws is you cannot curse, blaspheme God. You can't. You can't curse God. Right? God is 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 has to. Have be you know not your bum, and therefore you cannot curse God, must not curse God, and um, you know I think I think it was in the movie the Frisco Kid, where the cowboy kept on saying you know, damn it, but with God beforehand, and and the the um, who was I forget Gene Wilder I think, um, so he was he was furious. Stop saying that you cannot say that right, so that cursing God we don't say it. Adultery, right? No adultery. We 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 are we 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 um we sleep, we live, we're married to one person at a time, and it's you cannot um, you know adultery is and, and adultery specifically is refers to married people. So if you're a married person, you should not have any adultery with another person. And if you're both married, oive is mir, right? So you, adultery is out. And, and and we'll talk. We're going to talk. We'll get into it a little bit more. Uh, murder. You can't murder somebody, right? You can't murder. I, and I say murder, not kill, because there are Torah does believe in capital punishment, very infrequently, very rare. Has to be a special type of. Um, human that gets it or non-human that gets it I guess um, but but you can't just murder you can't you're angry at somebody you murder them you violate no right code theft taking something that doesn't belong to you is part of the no right code now um, in, in the, the the flood by Noah that's why there was a flood the Torah tells clearly there was Hamas there was just violence and robbery. People were taking things that didn't belong to them, and they took it by coercion. The 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 six of the seven is that you, and, and we discussed this a few classes ago, is that you cannot um, you can you cannot eat the flesh of a living animal. In order for an, for one to be allowed to eat meat, chicken, it has to be dead. 
right? You cannot cannot um, take something and, and eat from it while it's alive. And the last one is you have to have law and order, right? You have to have, you know, New York City talking to you, uh, San Francisco talking to you. You have to have law and order and you have to have courts and you have to have officers of the court and you have to have judges, you have to have bailiffs and you have to have police. And, and, um, and, and you know, defund the police, which, which means have less police, is immoral. If you want to enhance the police, that's great to bring in therapists and social workers, but to defund the police is, is, is an immoral act. Um, enhance the police, train the police, uh, etc., but not defund the police. So, so those are the seven Noahide laws. And as I said, they branch into, they branch into um, other other things. So, so um, you know, adult, uh, you know, adultery is general sexual promiscuous behavior. Even if you're if it's single, you know, in Judaism Torah frowns on two people living together without a commitment to one another. Definition of a commitment is a ketubah, a document, right? And um, just just you know, one night stands is considered not okay. And uh, in general, any sexual promiscuity. Um, the the the. Um, the, 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 it, it, it would uh, murder, murder, would would um, would be abortion. If you want, you know the ramifications, abortion. Judaism does not believe in abortion. I take that back. Judaism does. Judaism more liberal than than the Catholic Church. Judaism does allow abortion. Absolutely, it doesn't allow abortion as as a as you know. Oh, whoops, Plan B. Um, but, but if you know, but if, if if a woman needs to abort the baby for her health, for it was a rape, or or other reasons that would actually hurt the woman, severe emotional stress, then Judaism has doesn't have a problem with it. So, but that would be come under the guise of murder, uh, castration. Castration is a form of murder, not allowing somebody to to um, to procreate. And um, and you castrate them specifically a male, by the way. Um, it it is considered akin to murder. Um, and so, there are many many this thing branches out into many details. So my once again my, to, to to just recap, Maimonides says that um, if you keep the seven Noahide laws. Because God gave it, then you're considered a righteous gentile, and that was pretty much uh, that was pretty much, and it is pretty much the accepted practice. However, we, we've um, we've evolved, and you know, Rabbi Cook, the first chief rabbi of Israel, you know, he he, he his, his his opinion, which is broadly accepted, is a righteous gentile is somebody who does good. Somebody that somebody is really a righteous gentile, somebody that does good. So you have to keep these seven. You have to keep these seven. But the question is, do you keep it because of your own? It makes sense to you. According to Maimonides, that would be a problem. According to Rabbi Cook, it's not a problem. You keep them. You don't worship idols. You don't curse God. You, you know you're faithful to your spouse and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. You're a righteous gentile, and that is the. The, 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 the basic acceptance, now the definition of a righteous Gentile is someone who does good. There's more of a colloquial expression of righteous Gentile. And that is Gentiles that help Jews. Philo Semites. And, and by the way, I find it, I find it, it's sad in a way because we know all about anti-Semites. Anti, this person's an anti-Semite, and Omar is an anti-Semite, and Taleb is an anti-Semite, and AOC is fraternizer, right? So, and we know, we know, we have our finger on the pulse. Who's an anti-Semite, right? And this is a self-hating Jew, and this is, so we we have it, and we're very, very keenly aware. Are we also keenly aware of philo-Semites, people that love Jews, love Jews, 
they, they and they recognize that that a Jew is not bad and that they have morals and values. And the reason why others hate them is because they bring a certain form of, you know, the Torah is is, is a moral consciousness. And um, and you know they 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 love Jews. And and you know we so we know some Raoul Wallenberg is a is a philo Semite, right? He, he, he during the Holocaust he stepped up and there were many who stepped up during the Holocaust not just the Raoul Wallenberg but to, to, to give you to give you an example um, I'll give you a contemporary example of, of somebody who was extremely righteous and, and extremely is, is a philo Semite would be Nikki Haley the former uh, the US ambassador to the UN completely she she got it and she understood that that it's 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 insanity what's going on and she she but there 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 are plenty more and not even in the context of the Holocaust there are plenty of philo Semites um, people you meet on the street who who don't hate the Jew they just don't hate Jews they're philo Semites and um, and and we should recognize it that not everybody hates us um, and and to just you know to to cower. In fear and, and take on a victim personality. Um, yeah, we've had it rough. Our history's been rough for sure. But but there's good people. The 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 people that I've met in this community where I live, honest to God, good people. Honest to God, good people. It, I've met way way more people who like me as as a as a Jewish as a rabbi as a Jewish representative than 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 hate me. I've met a couple of haters, absolutely. And I attribute by the way the hate to ignorance, not even pure hate. Hitler had pure hate. It was a pure hate. Others are just ignorant. They're ignorant. They they don't they don't hate they hate the Jewish people. They're just ignorant. I, I sometimes I walk in the street and somebody says, you know, "F you, Jew." Uh, is it hate or is it just stupidity and and ignorance? Because I I'm wearing a kippah, so that rocks their boat. It's not, you know, but they they would uh, somebody wears a kaftan or somebody wears a hijab, uh, they would also yell and scream. It's not it's not their, I'm not going to take it personally. They're idiots. Um, I I you know Prince Philip. Which was he was married to Queen Elizabeth. Um, he was, you know, for, for, he died recently in '94. And when he died, I heard of a story about him uh, and about his mother specifically. So his mother was was um, Alice of Greece, Princess Alice of Greece. So she was the granddaughter of Queen Victoria, the famous Queen Victoria, and um, she was born deaf, and she. She um, she married a, a, uh, you know, a cousin who was the, the the you know the prince of Greece, and she moved to southern Greece. And she was there. She was you know she had she was very philanthropic, and she was an activist, and and just an honest to God good person. When the Nazis came, when the Nazis came to power, and they occupied. Southern Greece, and by the way, I don't know if you know this statistic, but 80,000 Grecian Jews were killed during the Holocaust. 80,000 in the country of Greece. I mean, just unbelievable numbers. Um, so when, when the Nazis came to power, um, she, she heard, and she knew this fellow by the name of Chaim Cohen. Um, Haim Cohen, I think, was a guy. Hey, Kami Cohen, the Chaim Cohen. Um, and, and he was a member of parliament, and therefore she was an activist, you know, she was royalty. So she knew him. And she had heard that Chaim Cohen and his kids went into hiding because of the Nazis. And they were hid in, in a nunnery, in a convent, and, and anyway, then, they, then they, she heard that they were, they were on the run again. So she, Princess Alice, got in touch and brought in Chaim Cohen, um, Chaim Cohen's wife. Chaim Cohen had been killed fleeing, but he brought, brought in Rachel Cohen and three daughters 
into the palace and, and gave them the top floor, certain rooms in the top floor of, of the palace. And she also gave them opportunities, telephone, to be able to contact the outside world. And based on, on, on the way they contacted the outside world is Rachel Cohen, Rachel Chaim, Chaim Cohen's other child, the boy, they brought into the palace also by ways of, of contact, communication. And she hid them there. And it was very tenuous because she had four children. One was Prince Philip, and he was sent off to war in England. She had three daughters, all married to SS officials. All married to Nazis. This, you know, Nazi, Nazi Socialist Party. It, it, it was all married. And, and these were her three daughters. And she did it anyway. And in fact, um, she was, the, the Nazis actually came to in, inspect the house because there was rumors. And so she played deaf. Like, and they were so frustrated with the conversation, they couldn't just storm the palace. She's the princess of Greece and she's not Jewish. And she got so frustrated because she was acting deaf that she, you know, even though she could read lips fluently, she was acting it out that she couldn't. And the Nazis left. And, and the Cohens eventually escaped and they, they saved them. You can read, read about Rachel Cohen and her family. So she saved, she saved a world of people, a world of people, and just, just amazing. When she, and then, then she moved to England. When she died, she said, I want to be buried in Israel. She's a philo semi. I want to be buried in Israel. So she, and she wasn't, she died in 1969, but 19 years later, in 1988, they exhumed her body and they brought her to Mount Olives and they buried her in a certain section for righteous Gentiles. And um, Prince Philip went to Israel and you go to her grave today. It's a simple stone. It says Alice of Greece. But it's in the righteous, right? She's Princess Alice. She was, she was the prince. She was the mother of Prince Philip who was the husband of Queen Elizabeth. No slouch here. Just an amazing, an amazing, an amazing story. Um, and, and so that's, that's uh, you know, this, this, is, this is the stock Prince Philip and came from. I mean, just unbelievable. And granted, you know, they had, the, uh, they had troubles on the other side. The, the um, you know, Prince Philip, when he, when he married Elizabeth, he did not want to take on the name Windsor. He wanted to keep his name, but you know, but it was tough because it's a German name, and we were at war with Germany, and you know, but so anyway, so he he took the name Windsor. Not on, he wasn't happy about it, but um, so that's I'll tell you another story. This is from the Talmud about a, a, a righteous gentile who the sages say is a righteous gentile. So the sages say that they, they the breastplate, the Kohen, the high priest wore a breastplate and each there was 12 stones huge precious gems diamonds and rubies and sapphires and uh, you know I don't know the you know and, and uh, emeralds except but they were huge they were you know designer pieces this is something that that um, you know um, you know the, the the wealthy would wear um, you know the, the uh, I'm trying to think of the these the, you know the socialites with, with, with big diamonds, big rocks. And one of them fell out and was lost. So they heard that a fellow by the name, a non-Jew by the name of Natina or Nesina, he had this jewel. So they came and the door was answered by Natina's son, Doma. It's a very famous story in the Talmud. And they said, we will, um, you know, we want to buy the stone. We understand you have the stone. He goes, yes, we have that stone. Um, and we'll pay an exorbitant amount of money. We'll pay a thousand, a thousand, you know, gold dinner him, a huge amount of money. So he goes into his father's room and his father's asleep. And his, the leg of his father is on the, the, uh, the, the chest where the jewel was. So he comes down and goes, no, I'm sorry, I can't let you have this stone. 
So the rabbis said, oh, he wants more money. So the rabbi said, we'll give you 2,000. And I said, no, 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 no. Anyway, 10,000. And he goes, you don't understand. It's not about the money. It's my father's asleep. I can't give you the stone. I can't disturb his sleep. And um, when he woke up, they made the sale. So the rabbi said, here's the 10,000. And Doma said, absolutely not. Bec if you give me 10,000, you take away from my mitzvah of honoring my father. So absolutely not. I'm going to take the, 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 um, the 1,000 original offer. And, and, and the rabbi said, we can learn. We can learn how to be a good person an honorable person, somebody who, who wouldn't even wake up his father because so sensitive is he. We, we could learn from, 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 from a non-Jew. So we, Jews, Jews, Jews can be parochial. It's no question we can be. Um, but but we, we're, we're taught we have to be respectful. And we have to recognize that, 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 that Jews have their Torah, non-Jews have their Torah. And, and they're equally, equally as important. And our job, once again, as the chosen people, is to chosen. Our job is to be the, the inspiration, the lamplighters, but not, 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 not to say, okay, we're better than the, and, um, and that, that's absolutely not, not, should not be in our lexicon, absolutely not. So, um, and, uh, you know, our, and, and the Lubavitcher Rebbe, you know, uh, he passed away already 20-something, 20 28 years ago, but we, in, his, in his later years, he said, we should print up pamphlets, pamphlets of, this, of these seven universal laws and make people aware of what they are. So the Rebbe didn't care only about Jewish people. He was, he was, he was focused and... and uh, uh, he was focused on, 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 on also, you know, this is probably f already 40 years ago, that he, you know, maybe 45 years ago, that he, that he said that we, we need to do this. And they printed books, and they printed, the Jews printed books, about seven um, Noahide laws and, and, uh, and, and, and what it means to be, to be an honorable Gentile, a righteous Gentile, et cetera, et cetera. And by the way, just because use, Jews use the term goy, it's not derogatory. Goy means nation. Goyim means nations. If it's used derogatory, then that's terrible. That the term goy in itself is not a derogatory term. Just not. So I said, "Oh, I'm just a goy." You know, stop denigrating yourself. But um, but if it's if if somebody uses it, if a Jew uses it, it's it's bad. It's it's like other names. You can't use it derogatory. It's just it's unacceptable. Um, right, guy and Gentile are exactly the same thing. <laughs> you know, but it all depends how 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 the tone or the context that it's used. Um, so yes, righteous Gentiles have heaven. There's a lot of righteous Gentiles out there. There's a lot of people who keep these seven Noahide laws, um, and and um, they, they you know they they they're very strict and they're very careful with sexual promiscuity. I think about I think about the you know the I, I was in Salt Lake City a couple of years ago. They're they they they're so tight about sex. They're so you know, Jew, Jew, even Torah is more liberal than um, than than they are. So. Um, it, it is it's plenty of righteous Gentiles, and 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 if you if you if you love us, then then uh, we truly appreciate it. And we know there's there's plenty plenty there's plenty in Congress there's plenty in, in the Senate, right? They are, there are anti-Semites as well, but there are are plenty, plenty of um, Jew-loving people, and um, you know we don't have to be you know crazed. We have to be careful. And we have to stand up against anti-Semitism because the gas chambers were only 70 something years ago. But not everybody's out to get us. All right. God bless. We will meet again. If you have any questions, rabbi at thechaicenter.com. If you have any comments, you can leave it here or rabbi at the high center. Um, 
quick favor. Please share this with others. It can be this class. It can be the Chai Academy in general. There, there's li literally 300 hours of classes available given by yours truly. And my mission is to teach. And the more people, um, right? There's, I'm not monetizing this. It's not about money. This is just strictly to teach. So if you can share it with others, it, it um, you'll, you'll help us fulfill our mission, our, our raison d'etre. God bless.